Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you and explain to you how salt thickens foaming surfactants. So first of all, let me start by saying it doesn't thicken all types of surfactants. Salt will only thicken certain types of anionic surfactants. It won't thicken non-ionic surfactants and it won't thicken amphoteric surfactants. Which is why if you've seen any of the natural formulations that don't use some of the surfactants that will thicken with salt, you'll see me use quite a lot of gums and that's simply because they won't thicken if they don't have the ability to thicken in the presence of salt. Here's a list of surfactant classes that do respond to salt and can thicken when salt is introduced into the formula in just the right amount. You'll see your alcohol sulfates are very salt responsive as are fatty acid taurides. So examples are sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium methyl cocal taurate. These particular materials thicken very easily when salt is added to the formula. Alcohol ether sulfates such as sodium lauryl ether sulfate, fatty acid isethanates such as sodium cocal isethanate, these have a moderate response to salt. They will thicken with the addition of salt, but you won't get the same viscosity build that you would from those that are more salt responsive. Using alcohol sarcosinates, if you use just the right combination of sodium lauryl sarcosinate, for example, with some amphoteric non-ionic materials and just the right amount of salt, they can be salt responsive at times, but other times you won't have much success thickening these formulas with salt. And if you're using a sulfur succinate or an alcohol glutamate, such as a sodium cocal glutamate, you won't get any sort of viscosity improvement with the addition of salt. Why? Why does this happen? Let me explain it to you this way. So when you have an anionic surfactant, you have a hydrocarbon chain and you have a charged head group. Now this charged head group, the size of the head group actually depends on the amount of charge on the molecule. Your alcohol sulfates, alcohol ether sulfates, and your fatty acid taurides have a relatively large head group because of their charge. Now, when you add these materials to water, they will spontaneously form these spherical shapes called micelles. And they form this arrangement because of the size of their relative head group. Now, when we add salt to the formula, they move from a spherical shape to more of a rod-like shape. And when they form these long cylinders and we start to stir the formula, they tangle. And in tangling, the viscosity of the formula dramatically improves. We also see a similar change to the relative size of this head group when we adjust the pH, add electrolytes, or mix these anionic surfactants with amphoteric surfactants to form mixed micelles, which also take on a cylindrical shape. That's why amphoteric materials like cocomida propyl betaine can help increase the viscosity of salt responsive surfactants. To help you understand how these cylindrical micelles tangle and increase viscosity so much, I've brought in some coat hangers. Yes, standard ordinary coat hangers. The amazing thing about coat hangers is they do a similar thing in a wardrobe. When you buy coat hangers from a shop, they come packed nice and flat like this. But take off that wrapper from the coat hangers and I don't know what happens, but all of a sudden you end up with a bit of a tangly mess. And that is what's happening in your shampoo bottle when you add salt to a salt responsive surfactant. So now let me show you properly how to thicken your surfactant formulas in the lab. So here's an example of the product we're going to be making today. As you can see, it's that nice gel consistency. It's not going to run or drip out of the hand, but it still flows relatively easily. Now I am using an alcohol ether sulfate in this formula. It's a very basic formula, but you can use similar proportions with other salt responsive materials and see how it performs for you. So I'm going to start with my water here first. 
and to this I'm going to add my sodium lauryl ether sulfate. Now this is in a paste form. I'm also going to add the cocomita propyl betaine. And I'm going to add my super fatting agent. Now that is the most basic but important build to any cleansing formula is to have your anionic for its cleansing power and amphoteric to improve mildness and help build viscosity if it's salt responsive and a non-ionic super fatting agent to help also improve the mildness. Now we just stir this until it's combined. And to this, I'm just going to add the preservative. Now I'm using uh, an acidifying preservative. It will help bring the pH of this formula down. And remember I talked about pH altering the shape of that head group so that we can already start to form some of our cylinders. At this point, you can see the product is water thin. So let's stir that preservative through and have another look. we can still see it's water thin. Now don't worry about these bubbles here. In a lab size sample, it's pretty hard to avoid introducing air on the day of mixing. So you'll see bubbles on the day, but by the next day, it settles out completely clear like this. Now, the first thing we need to do before adding salt is we need to check and adjust the pH of this formula. We need to adjust pH before adding salt because pH can have a profound effect on the viscosity of the product. Now that we've adjusted pH, we can check again. You can see it is still water thin and that's not at all acceptable. So now we start to add salt. We add salt in maximum 0.5% weight for weight increments at a time and then stir it through. I can see it's gone a bit thicker here and you can see it doesn't quite drip as much. It's still too thin. So we're going to add some more salt. We can check it again. And we can see it is now starting to get a little bit thicker. So we can keep adding salt in 0.3 to 0.5% increments maximum at a time and see what effect it has on the product. We can see now we're starting to get a really good viscosity build. So we'll just try a little bit more salt. Now you do record how much salt you're adding each time. You would do this in your formula and then you need to remake the sample to ensure the total formula adds to 100%. The amount of salt you add in your lab sample should be uh, the same in a large batch. So you do need to record what you're adding at the lab stage and repeat the formula to ensure it has the same result again when you've adjusted the water. see now we have a nice viscous product. Now you might be wondering why am I only adding small increments at a time? Because if we over add the salt we will compress the head group too much and then we'll end up with planar bilayer micelles which will just slide over each other instead of getting tangled. Watch what happens when we add too much salt. goes back to being thin and runny again instead of the viscous gel that we want to be creating. 
So that is how salt thickens certain types of surfactant systems. Just remember it won't work if the surfactant is not salt responsive and I went through those earlier in this video. It's also really important that you check and adjust the pH first. As you saw in today's video, the pH change didn't affect our surfactant system enough, so we used a little bit of salt to help it thicken more. You'll also note that I added salt in 0.3 to 0.5% weight for weight increments. 0.5% weight for weight at an absolute maximum at a time. Because if you overshoot the mark, you'll irreversibly thin your formula and you've got to start again. Make sure you make adjustments and record the salt you add in your formula at the lab stage and then repeat the formula with the salt added and the water adjusted in another sample before scaling up so that your formula totals 100% and not more with the addition of salt. If you need to add about 3% of salt and you're still not getting a viscosity increasing effect, then it's not gonna happen. Throw that sample out and start again because salt's not going to thicken your system. I hope this has helped you understand how salt thickens certain surfactant systems. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below. Remember, you can contact us to get this formula. And then of course, you can try it out with other salt responsive surfactants. And make sure you subscribe to get notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.